everyone, and welcome to the GAA PDSD Future Leaders Podcast. My name is Sally Fox, and this is the third in our series of five podcasts that we'll be broadcasting between now and the end of the school year. As always, the GAA would like to give a huge thank you to the PDSD for their fantastic continued support with all aspects of the Future Leaders program. Today, we're going to be discussing sports journalism and sports. And to do that today, I'm delighted to be joined by John Harrington, Ramsey Cardi, and Joseph Walsh. John Harrington is a chief writer for the GAA website, GAA.ie. He previously worked for the Irish Independent, the Irish Star and the Irish Sun newspapers over the course of a 20 year career in sports journalism. He is also the author of two sports biographies on Tipperary hurling legend, John Doyle and All-Ireland winning football manager, John O'Mahony. Ramsey Cardi is a sports photographer based in Dublin, working for the photography agency, Sports File. Worked he worked as a freelance photographer after leaving college in 2008 and has been working for Sports File ever since 2013. He's covered many events, including two Olympic Games, two Rugby World Cups, boxing and UFC world title fights, two Ryder Cups and three Cheltenham Racing Festivals and has been club photographer at the Leinster Rugby since 2017. So very busy. <laughs> Joseph Walsh is a Leaving Cert student in Killinap Presentation Secondary School in County Offaly. Joseph did the Future Leaders program when he was in TY and he won the Future Leaders photography competition two years ago. He has since gone on to start his own photography business called Walsh Photography. Uh, welcome guys, it's great to have you all here. Thanks Ali. Thanks. Uh, so we'll start with you John. Um, then I'm sure lots of Future Leaders sports journalism students will be wondering how and why you got into journalism. So do you want to tell us a bit about that maybe? Yeah, sure, Sally. Um, I suppose I would have actually first gotten into it uh, at the age probably most transition year students are at now, uh, so it might be relevant for them. I uh, would have had an interest in sport, obviously, but also in writing. English would have been my favourite subject in secondary school. And um, there just an opportunity came along to uh, write match reports on the school's, school's match reports for the local newspaper, which is Tipperary Star. Um, so they started getting published and I suppose that gave me a bit of encouragement. Um, like the first time you see your, your name on an article, it's a bit of a buzz like, and you're, yeah, you really start thinking maybe seriously about it as a profession. And then I did a um, journalism uh, degree and uh, in DCU for four years. And then I was fortunate that the last part of that degree was a work placement with uh, the Irish Independent. And uh, then even more fortunate, I suppose, that they kept me on afterwards. So um, it was quite seamless for me to get into it. It's not always that easy. Uh, but I suppose, like any job, opportunity comes along and you have to try and make the most of it when they do. So that's how I got into it, basically. That's brilliant. So from a young age, then that's, that's really good. And then, um, Ramsey, the same question for you. How did you get involved in sports photography? Yeah, well, mine was kind of, I was in college doing something completely different. I was studying web design and wanted to be a web designer. That was when I was 18. Um, and then picked up a camera and just started taking some pictures. Again, didn't really have an interest in photography or certainly not of making a career out of it. And then I started, um, I did start looking into it as a career as I, I started to take some pictures for the college magazine. And then kind of progressed from there a little bit. Um, so from there, I kind of worked in, uh, I did a lot of concert photography and a lot of music, um, working with a lot of bands. And then I worked in the, uh, a local newspaper in Belfast I was working for. And then uh, in 2013, uh, a job came up at Sports Vibe. So I was working for myself in Belfast and then a job came up in, um, in Sports Vibe. I applied and, and that was it really. So I always had an interest in sport, but probably didn't have an interest in photography until I was about 18. And that was when it really progressed. I, I just taught myself. So I, I actually have no qualifications in photography, but um, great thing, I suppose, about digital photography, you can, uh, you can teach yourself really not. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. That's really, really good. And then, um, so John, a lot of people around the country, I'm sure are very, very envious of the fact that you get to crawl Crow Park, your place of work. So can you tell us a bit about a day in the life of a sports journalist and like in general and on match days? Yeah, so uh, I work for GA.ie, which is the GA's website. So uh, writing content and filming a little bit of content as well. So I suppose on an average week, um, on a Monday, you generally try and work a, a week ahead if you can. So you're looking in, your, in the diary for whatever matches might be coming up in two weeks time. 
or future ideas for that time. So you always sort of have something ready to go on a Monday. But generally, Monday is a, a lot of planning as well. If you don't have anything ready to go, you're um, maybe looking at, say, if we're in the height of the championship, for example, um, you're looking ahead to the weekend, what matches are on. Uh, you might want to frame some free previews around that, preview interviews, features. Um, so it can, be, it can be quite diverse, I suppose, with GA.ie, where we try and maybe do pieces that wouldn't appear elsewhere. So say, for example, like this week, um, I would have had a feature on um, hurling in Fermanagh, which obviously wouldn't be something maybe newspapers are interested in. It's not, wouldn't be top billing. Um, I'll be chatting to a guy tomorrow in Australia who set up a new GA club in Melbourne. Um, so yeah, it's very diverse in terms of what I do in terms of feature ideas. You're trying to maybe shine a light and parse of the GA that mightn't, it might be a bit different if you're working for a newspaper. It's more sort of high profile stuff. Uh, then on match days, um, yeah, you'll. Uh, in terms of our website, we get we get every game covered. So I'll assign a freelancer to every match. I'll go to a game myself. Uh, so if I'm working at a game, I'll write my own match report, and then I'll edit match reports that come into me from other from our freelance writers that write for GA.ie. Uh, we'll also have a live blog of the games. Um, then a round of matches in Croke Park. I'll do some uh, video interviews after the game with uh, the winning and losing manager and, and players perhaps as well if it's coming towards the end of the season. And the games are high profile ones. Um, you get to a game early, try and get settled. Um, try not to be, uh, you know, rushing too much, as controlled as you can. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very diverse, I suppose, in my job, which is great. Um, it's always busy, which is great too. But, uh, yeah, no day is really the same, which I suppose is a nice thing to say because every story you do is a bit different usually, so it takes you down different avenues. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it sounds non-stop. It sounds very, very busy, but I'd say very interesting because, as you said, every day is different. That's yeah, really it is. It's busy. Um, you know, the hours can be long, but I suppose it's like Anton, if, you're, if you do enjoy your job and you're passionate about it and, and look, I'm... I know loads of people would love to be uh, writing about sport for a living or be involved in sport. So it's what I wanted to do and I enjoy doing it. So yeah, the hours can be long at times, but it is a rewarding job, definitely. That's amazing. That's really good. And then, so Ramsey, can you tell everyone about a day in the life of a sports photographer? Yeah, so my kind of, um, similar to John really, that my Monday to Thursday would be working with a lot of sponsors doing photo shoots for different products whether that's maybe sponsors of ga or maybe aib littlewood center or someone like that working with them to promote something or other with players then friday saturday sunday the weekend so that's kind of nearly all matches for us so we cover sports file not just ga but we cover every sport you can imagine um so we would be there kind of maybe three hours before kickoff. So it's not, we have to be there very early. So we'll be there long before the first fan arrives. We'll be there setting up. We'll get the fans coming in. There'll be lots of pictures of them, lots of color pictures. We'll be, maybe the team's arriving. Um, especially with social media now, um, for blogs and online, they want pictures very early. Um, and then at the game itself, we'll be shooting just everything. We'll shoot all angles of it. You want to, especially now that fans aren't actually able to go to the game at the moment. Um, you want to cover everything there. Um, so that's everything from teams arriving, teams coming out. We do some fan pictures, do lots of action pictures during the game, all the different angles. We'll try to get all the big moments of the game. And then hopefully at the end of the game, you get somebody celebrating as well and maybe some dejection. And then and we'll be filing our pictures during the game. So we'll often either have our laptops alongside us. So we'll, we'll be sending pictures as we go for people like John to be using in their articles. Um, or else we can send straight back to our office from our camera. So it's, it's quite a busy, uh, it's a, quite a busy, intense period, the match. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a really busy day, but it's great to be there. Yeah, it sounds very busy, but as I said, like interesting, you know, I'd say you've a lot to do. You'd be very, very busy. <laughs> and then, so Joseph, you would have witnessed that firsthand then when you won the Future Leaders Photography Competition and went up to Crow Park on Leinster Hurling final day and shadowed Ramsey Pitchside. So can you maybe tell us a bit about the competition? Like how did you enter? And can you tell us about the day itself yeah. when you went to Crow Park? Yeah, of course. 
Um, so just I was really interested in the future leaders and I seen this competition come up actually, the photography one. And I was sort of in the midst of falling out with photography. I had my own camera and all and I was like, nothing to do with it. I was just getting bored. And then this competition came up and really just maybe dive into the deep end again. So uh, we had to take a photo of the blitz that was on and there was a blitz on in the fire pitch. So we organized all the primary schools to come down and organized all the teams and everything. And I was just there at my camera, just taking pictures of everything, of all the celebrations. And then I made a portfolio and sent it on, uh, sent it on into the competition. And luckily a few months back or a few weeks back, got word that I won and I was absolutely delighted and head over heels and just then excited to go up to Crow Park. And when I went up, it was just a surreal experience being pitch side, like not many people would get to do that. So just shadowing Ramsey there beside him, he was just giving me all the tips and all the tricks when, because I've never done it before, I was never up, it's such a high profile game. So then after even the celebrations, running out onto the pitch, taking photos off him, it was just an amazing experience altogether. So Yeah, it sounds, it must have been like an unbelievable experience really to be on the sideline. Like it must have been absolutely surreal. Yeah, so, surreal. yeah like what did it feel like then being uh, can you elaborate on what it was like being actually pitch side? Yeah, so just you seeing all the fans, I, I don't know, was it a full stadium at the time, but just the atmosphere of being down there. But even Ramsey and all, he's just, he's out every day. So he wouldn't be, you know, I mean, I was there like a, excited as I don't know what. It was just really, my God. And there's barely anyone pitch side. So just to be one of them, the small percentage of people that ever even get to go there and be pitch side, it was just, yeah, the atmosphere as well. That sounds really, really, really amazing. Yeah. Um, so we're going to look at some of the photos that you took that day then, Joseph. Um, yeah. So like the moment. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, photo is different. So what was happening here? Yeah, so you can just see the Wexford forward running in on goal and the player, Kilkenny, absolutely wrapped around him trying to get the ball. You can even see the slitter in his hand. And just I love it because the colour that pops in it, you can see the full stadium behind just... It's, I don't know, that was one of my favourite photos I took that day. Now, you can just really see the player just trying to get the ball and it was, they're putting everything into that photo. So I was delighted with that. Yeah, it's a really brilliant photo. It really is. Mm -hmm. about this photo then? So as you can see, Lee Chin there celebrating with one of his fans, obviously. And I love this because you can see the minor team in behind and they were after winning the game previous. So they had the Leinster final as well as the senior team. So it really just captures the two teams in comparison to both of them after winning the final and just a fan even delighted getting to meet her idol so that was brilliant absolutely love that one as well I think it's really cool how it's like taking a photo of someone taking a photo yeah yeah I know it's brilliant um one more then what about this photo just literally you can see even yourself I yeah I have my watermark there at the bottom I was trying to get rid of that I couldn't but never mind that just you see all the whole team surrounding me. Well, there was a few photographers there as well. I'd say Ramsey was beside me somewhere. But just all them athletes literally being right in front of you. And just uh, you can see it in their face as well, what it meant to them. And even what it meant to me, just being in that moment and capturing that. Just that was a really, really surreal experience, especially that whole. So, yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah, I think that's that's my favourite photo. I think I was looking through all of them earlier, but that yeah. one is really, really yeah, good. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's going to be mine as well. Yeah, it's very, very good. No, they're amazing photos. They really are. Mm -hmm. Thanks a million. I've all worked on sports media then for a few years. So starting with you, John, what was the biggest or like the most memorable event or game kind of that you've covered so far and why? Um, few, I suppose, in a, in a GA sense, uh, but your first big game is always memorable. I was, I'd only been working in the Irish Independent uh, in the Evening Herald for a few weeks when I was sent to work at the, the 2000 Munster final. So that was a big deal, like to be in a, a full press box in a full stadium for a big game. And it was Tipperary Cork and I'm from Tipperary. So it meant that bit more. We lost, unfortunately. But that was, I mean, I'll always remember that in the sense that, yeah, wow, I'm, I didn't think this would happen I'd be in this situation so soon and it felt like a big deal and you felt like you're yeah now you are a journalist um 
then I suppose, I mean, all the All Ireland finals are very memorable, very memorable. But I suppose the 2019 one, quite recently, that was I got a totally different perspective on the day because I suppose I was in the same areas that Ramsey normally is and that Joseph would as experienced as photographers because normally, like I come from a writing background and I would have been in the press boxes for All Ireland finals before. But um, we started doing something a bit different from 2019 in GA.ie where we were doing a little bit of mojo videoing around big games, which is basically um, turning your, using the, the camera on your iPhone with a gimbal, which basically turns your phone into a steady cam and just doing little behind the scenes shots that and setting them to music. So just to be a pitch side um, for the match, for the All-Ireland, for when the final whistle blows, I mean, Ramsey tell you all about it, the explosion of emotion seeing that up close, getting, I was, I was very fortunate to have sort of access all areas past. So that was just something totally different. Um, and yeah, really memorable. Um, you know, I've been lucky, uh, like I, when I was working for newspapers, it wasn't just GA, there was other events like Bernard Dunn, Ricardo Cordoba, World Title Fight, uh, Six Nations uh, matches, Heineken Cup Finals. So yeah, they're all memorable in their own right, but I would say, that first big game and then 2019, just seeing the whole thing from a totally different perspective will always stick with me. Yeah, it's yeah. Like so surreal being there. And then Ramsey, were you present um, at any of the events that John's mentioned there? Yeah, like we probably, sports fans would cover all you know, big GA, you know, all the GA games really. So yeah, I would be, um, we would have been there and we would have seen John on the pitch as well. And like run around, it's, as I said, it's such a great, um, Going around at that at a pitch side level, it's you're so close to the the, the fans, the the players. Like it's, it's so interesting. Um, you can hear them screaming at each other, and you can hear everything. It's yeah, it's, it's a great place to be on the pitch. I think, as John says. Yeah, and which one stands out to you then the most? Um, so sorry, as an event. Yeah, which event? Okay. So um, so for me, I went. I do a lot of um, cover a lot of rugby at, um, at sports pod. So for me, Ireland beating New Zealand. 2018 was was a was a really big game. Like they had tried so many times, um, and they, you kind of felt like the the team was building. They were going really well, and you felt like this could be the time to beat them at home. Um, and the yeah, like the winning try was kind of five meters right in front of me. Um, so it was great. And the noise of the stadium, like it's on those big days um, when you're sitting right beside the pitch and the fans are screaming, they're right behind you. It's really hard to describe that. Um, it's something we definitely miss from COVID. Um, but then as an event as a whole, I would say the Olympics in, uh, in Rio in 2016 was, was just something else. Like the, the sheer scale of it, um, it's huge. And, and getting to cover lots of different sports was something I really, really enjoyed. Yeah, it's crazy actually thinking back now that there were events on because we've been in you know, the pandemic for so long, even thinking yeah. back to the amount of people in the stadiums, I'm like, oh my God, it's crazy. I can't wait to kind of go back to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so we have some photos here that you have mm -hmm. taken. So um, I'll just get some of them off now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about this photo then? Yeah. So this is uh, the 2019 all Ireland final, Dublin and Kerry. Um, this is Dean Rock kicking. I get the 70th minute, it says on the scoreboard. And this is the last kick of the, the game. And this is him kicking the, the win. And it's um, he's just so much going on between, like, you can see Dean obviously kicking. Then you've got the three carry players in front all trying to defend the block. There's a, the scoreboard is there. When you zoom in, you can see the fans. There's just so much going on in it. Um, and a full stadium, like, it's, um, yeah, it's a picture I really, really like. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing photo. It really is. There's so much, like, detail in it. It's mm. just really, really good. Um, this photo then is amazing I think so can you tell us a bit about how you took it yeah so this picture is taken by what we would call a remote camera so this picture or the the camera was put in place about 10 o'clock that morning and it was clamped onto the uh, the skyline in, uh, in Crow Park and um, so I'm actually in this picture so this so I clamped it up and I basically trigger it so I'm somewhere around the halfway line actually taking my pictures. Mm. Um, but I have what's basically a radio control on my, um, my camera and it will trigger and send a sensor to, uh, to trigger this camera as well. So I set this up in the morning of the game 
knowing that the uh, the event was going to happen, there'd be a full stadium and there'd be lots going on on the pitch. And this is kind of what I had in my head. And this was the moment that I wanted to capture. Um, so you're never sure what, what it's going to look like until you actually get up there. After It was probably an hour after the event finished that I went back and retrieved the camera. And it's only then that you go and you, you look and you see see what it looked like from up there. And you're, you're obviously delighted when you, you see that picture. That's exactly how you imagined it and what you were hoping for. Yeah, that's really cool because I wasn't sure um, how it was taken. I thought it could have been a drone or something, but I didn't actually know that it was clamped onto the skyline. Yeah, that's yeah. So it was on the, the edge of the skyline. Um, we quite commonly on big games in Croke Park, we were putting cameras often the day before and um, sometimes in the morning of the game. And you always have something in your head that you're trying to, trying to accomplish. Sometimes it's just a goal picture from above. Sometimes it's the overall view. Um, so yeah, we try to try to use remote cameras as often as possible to capture these different pictures. Really, yeah, it looks like an absolutely amazing moment. Like, so good. What's happening then in this photo? Okay, so this is um, from the the game that Joe was with me at um, the Leinster hurling final. Um, so it was very similar to the picture that, that Joe took. It was probably only I'd say ten or fifteen seconds later. Um, one of the great things about getting pitch access. GA games is if you get on there within kind of 10 15 seconds of the final whistle you get so much emotion and reaction from the players um and like this picture of Lee Chain like he's he loves the camera and um yeah it just it just says everything like it's pretty full stadium and um yeah you can tell Lee's uh he's delighted with the, the result of the match yeah I think it's crazy the amount of emotion in one photo you know yeah. exactly how he's feeling like it's yeah it's crazy it's really mad such a okay and so we'll do one more then okay. these series of photos how were they taken and like what was the event yeah so one of my roles as sports file is the club photographer to lens the rugby so um i've been at that since 2017 so this is this is my first season with with leinster and um they reached the european cup final in bilbao so this is just a series of pictures that i took on the day um, so we have some match action, but then in the dressing room, the top right after, that's, it's a really special place to like, be the only photographer that gets the access to get into there. It's, um, it's a really unique place where all the players are celebrating and you don't really know what's going to happen. You can't plan anything. You just have to go with whatever the players do, whatever happens. And they all congregated in the corner um, for a team picture. And you can just see it does so much, um, so much happiness in there. Um, yeah, so it was a great day. Yeah, they're really like a collection of vibrant photos, I think. Yeah. You know, they're they're really good. Um, so there are those photos anyway. Um, so John and Ramsey, then social media is a huge part of our lives at the moment. And so in last week's podcast, I spoke to John Murphy and Dermot Carr about the impact, both pos- both positive and negative, of social media. So as a journalist and a photographer, what are your opinions on social media? And do you think it has had a big impact on print media? So we'll start with you, John. Um, uh, yeah, it definitely has had a, a big impact. Um, and look, there, there's all sorts of negatives about social media in terms of, uh, you know, the impact on having people and how it can be a bit of a pile on for negativity. But there are positives too in terms of you're a journalist and you're trying to get a story out there. I mean, it's so instant. Uh, like I would have come from a print background and would have worked in newspapers for most of my career, but now I'm a digital journalist uh, working for a website and, uh, you know, you can get the piece written and up, uh, published on social media and you quickly get feedback. So uh, be it good or bad, hopefully mainly good, but uh, you get a sense and I, I would say also that print journalists who, who, who pieces are now published on social media get a sense of the feedback of what people think about it, of maybe the conversations that's starting. Whereas before, yeah, you're hoping, you, you see the circulation of a newspaper, say, you know how many are sold on a weekend on a particular day. You don't know how many people have read your article or what they think of it. Now you, you're getting pretty instant feedback. Sometimes you might have to be thick-skinned about that. But more often than not, it's good to know... Um, what sort of impact your piece is having, uh, the conversations are starting. Maybe you learn a bit as well about, you know, for example, someone could react to a piece and give you a piece of information that you didn't know and you can develop something else from there. 
Um, so yeah, like from a professional point of view, social media, I, I find it to be a very positive thing. Mm. And then Ramsey or Joseph, do you kind of have any opinion on it then? Yeah, like for us, we can get pictures out there within minutes of, of key moments of matches that, um, yeah, it gives us an outlet to, pro to provide them out there um, really, really quickly. And people are looking at them and sharing them. So in that regard, it's, it's great. Um, but I suppose what's the challenge of that is actually getting them out there that quickly is in like previously years ago, we would have been working mainly for print deadlines. So the newspaper would go to print in the evening. Whereas now everybody wants a picture straight away. So we have to be able to provide that. It means you have to get the picture out as fast as you possibly can. So it means that while you're concentrating on the game, you're also trying to get the picture to the client as well. So that, that kind of comes with its own challenges, but, but all in all, like it's, it gives us a big outlet, social media. Mm. Yeah, everything um, quite um quick. You know, it all happens really quick. Like I'd be watching a match and next thing, two seconds after someone gets a goal or whatever, it's up online straight away. And I'd be like, oh, there's obviously people doing that straight away. And that's mad. I think it's really yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great for like for the GA to connect with the public. I mean, I haven't checked in a while, but I think the GA's Twitter account has around 400,000 followers. So, I mean, uh, it's a great, great vehicle for the GA to get its content out there. Like, you know, um, and it, we do it in lots of different ways, like uh, videos, um, you know, live blogs, uh, Facebook lives. Uh, uh, it's just, it's really maybe changed how GA clubs as well I would share ideas. Um, you know, the Healthy Clubs is a big part of the GA now, and there's a Healthy Club, Clubs Facebook page. And I'd be looking at that now and then, and they're all helping each other out with great ideas. So it's sort of a, a great collective now. So in loads of different ways, it's been positive for the GA. Yeah, I feel like in that sense, there are more positive things as opposed to negative. You know, obviously it's quite difficult to get everything out really quickly, but overall, I feel, I feel like it does have quite a positive effect. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then I was in Croke Park last year, John, where you did a super video journalism workshop as part of the Future Leaders Club School Link. Um, so do you have any tips around video journalism for Future Leaders students who want to like showcase their events on social media? Yeah, I would say, I mean, what, what, what Joseph was saying there, um, I think is the attitude you need to have insofar as a bit of get up and go and he backed himself and he put a portfolio together and, um, you know, it's all very doable uh, with the modern technology we have now, uh, not just photography, but for videography. I mean, I sort of, like as I was saying, I come from a print journalism background. I, writing was my profession. And uh, but we just tried something different with, with no real uh, sort of training as such. You learn as you go. But and I know you from you're using Filmic Pro, which is an app I use for the phone. It's very user friendly and uh, the editing app apps are very like iMovie very user friendly too so I mean if you have an iPhone and you have those two apps and you have an interest in sport or an interest in whatever and you just sort of back yourself to go out and try things and learn as you go I mean don't put too much pressure on yourself to have a masterpiece immediately you'll learn very quickly and um, and you'll find you know that once you start doing it you realize things are attainable that maybe you didn't think war and sort of demystifies the thing and I suppose maybe maybe gives you an idea of potential career paths to follow so I suppose yeah go back just I mean Joseph is a great example I think of what, what can be done if you back yourself. <laughs> yeah um because I myself wasn't that tech savvy let's say like I used to think that all these professional videos were being taken on cameras and stuff but the more I looked into it the more I realized like half of them were taken on phones just with the right apps and stuff but yeah no I do find it quite easy now as like I've learned from doing my solo videos and stuff it is quite easy to actually make the videos and edit it once you just get yourself in the headspace yeah, yeah. definitely and um I mean look uh, there's so much uh, resources online to help you as well in terms of giving you ideas and look someone like Ramsey here has over a period of years I'm sure he will tell you at the start it was a, a steep learning curve for him as well but you learn as you go and uh, you, you, you figure things out in the hoof as like as he was saying he didn't have any formal training and, and look where he has gone 
by basically forcing himself to learn and learn as you go. And I, it's the same. It's really the same for, yeah, like I went to say DCU obviously to study journalism, but I would have learned more in my first few weeks in a job. And, and even, you know, when I was in school writing match reports for local newspapers, there's, you know, if you, if you, if you just try doing something, you'll find it's probably easier than you thought and you get better, maybe quicker than you thought too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's, that's really good. Yeah. So sticking with you there, John, but changing the subject slightly, I mentioned at the start that you were the author of two sports biographies. So can you just maybe briefly tell us a bit about them? Like was writing a book kind of something you always wanted to do or? Yeah, I suppose it would have been, um, would have had an ambition to do it and maybe an opportunity came along then um, in 2010, I would have written my first book, which was a biography. I'm from Tipperary and one of our great hurling legends would have been John Doyle who won eight All-Ireland medals. Um, when he, So he passed away and I suppose I would have been interested in that era of hurling. I would have read a lot about it growing up and there were, you know, you read great stories, but nothing had ever really been put down on paper about, about that era and not about him. And so I would have got in touch with his family maybe uh, less than a year after he passed away and inquired would they be interested in the story being told and they were. So yeah, it was really enjoyable as a temporary person to really delve into that period of history, talk to, uh, you know, former temporary players from that era and their opponents about the great days that they had. And, you know, like it was nice for them to as well, maybe share those memories rather than to be gone forever sort of thing. So that was a really enjoyable project. Uh, so that was a biography rather than an autobiography. I wrote a ghost wrote an autobiography then with John O'Mahony, the former Galway Mayo football manager, two-time All-Ireland winner football manager with Galway and that was really interesting experience as well. A chat, different sort of experience because you're trying to basically uh, write a book that's reflective of that person's voice. So it reads almost like they're telling the story, which is a bit different than writing the story yourself. So but yeah, it, like it's a lot of work, um, a lot of hours, late hours, um, but it is really worth it then when you have a book in your hands and you feel like you've done the subject matter uh, decent service as well yeah and how long did each one take then to write overall yeah well, it was a quick enough turnaround really because I suppose I was working to a deadline which is good and bad in some ways if you didn't have a deadline it might take you a lot longer like you know but uh so I suppose they were both books would have been written um in less than six in six months like you know so which is very tight turnaround but <laughs> um yeah so <laughs> my social life wasn't great those two years. You know, was it? And so then there must be quite a number of interviews involved in writing books like them. So in the future leaders sports journalism module, one of the tasks is to conduct an interview. So is there any tips that you give a student to help them with that? Um, yeah, well, I suppose do your research on the person you're interviewing first uh, as much as you can. Um, I would also say when you're interviewing someone is you, after you've done your research, you'll probably have a list of questions written out and topics you want to cover. But don't be too prescriptive either because uh, you've, you'll find, OK, I need to get ans ask all these questions, but you're so focused on get, asking these questions. You don't always listen to the answers that you've been given. And quite often there's an avenue to go down a much more interesting route from something someone has told you. Uh, so just maybe really listen to the person you're asking the questions and be led by them and, and follow the story that might be unfolding naturally rather than be too prescriptive yourself. Yeah, no, that's good. very good. And there's also a commentary task. Um, so do you have any tips then for people completing that? So commentating on a match, is it? Yeah. Uh, well, I think... The best commentators aren't necessarily the ones who are calling everything exactly as what's happened. It's the people who, who have emotion in their voices and who really get into the action like uh, and paint a picture. I suppose, you know, the likes of me, Oliver Hertig uh, would be the perfect example of someone who just paints picture with words. Uh, so I don't always maybe say the ball is passed from A to B to C to D and this person scored. Uh, maybe try and paint those pictures by being a bit creative in your expressions but also um letting the emotion out of your chest when you're when you're talking about a great score or a great hit or whatever 
Yeah, thank you. thanks so much. Um, and then, Ramsey, so do you have any advice for any budding sports photographer who might be entering the Future Leaders Photography Competition like Joe did? Yeah, it's kind of similar to what John said there, that the great thing about modern technology and cameras is that you can see the results so, so quickly now. You can look at the back of the camera or look at your phone and see the result. So you can really teach yourself very, very quickly um, what's good and what's bad and how to make improvements. So if you work to learn the settings and how the camera actually works, um, you can make improvements really, really quickly, I think, now. Um, so I would, I would always say to people that they get out and photograph just, just local sport, like your local DA club or local school or wherever it might be. Um, and just practice at that level. Just keep going to matches and just keep keep at it, and you'll you'll really really enjoy it. I think. Um, and if you keep working from that, I think the improvements will come really quickly. Mm, yeah, I think sometimes the more kind of spontaneous photos are the better. Like I myself take quite bad photos, but sometimes the more um, spontaneous the photo is, the better. You know, I just pull out my phone and take a picture of the sunset or something. But it's so much better than like taking photos for ages. But anyway, that's just me. <laughs> and then um, Joseph, tell us a bit about what's happened photography wise since for you, like since the competition. Yeah, well, um, obviously after our competition, I fell back into love with photography. And then I actually had a work experience coming up and I was like, here, what will I do with my last one? And I said, can I just go work with my dad or something, just take the easy way out. And then actually I just text Ramsey and I was like, here's there any chance at all, like if I could get up there. And he actually worked really hard and got me up there for a full week, went up in the train every morning. And actually my sister was up in college and I stayed with her some nights. So it was just easy. And Ramsey would collect me or some of the other guys in sports file. I was sort of going from Ramsey then to Seb the next day or whatever. So I'd be with all these different photographers learning all different tricks. And just since that, it's really propelled me on. Like even at the Crow Park, I used one of the lenses. There was one of one of the photographers there, Ramsey was gone to the far side of the pitch and I can't remember who it was now, but he let me use one of his lenses, the 70 to 200. And I just, yeah, fell in love with that. And two weeks later, I bought that lens. So that actually even brought me on a bit as well because just there's so much more photos and so much more angles you can go out with a uh, long lens so I was absolutely delighted with that and even around the town now I do pieces for some businesses I contact them or they contact me and I do some sort of marketing for them online or Instagram or for the website or anything I do videos as well so it's really really branched off since just the whole future leaders if that wasn't a thing just I think I would have it would have fell into something else but I'm absolutely delighted now because it really gave me the opportunities to spark and join me and do everything I did yeah like as you said you started to fall out of love with photography but then the future leaders program yeah. and winning the competition did change that so can you maybe like elaborate a bit on that yeah so just I don't know I was I uh, in sixth class out of my confirmation when I actually bought a camera and I so I was taking photos for three to four years obviously I was still young I was about 12 when I bought the camera but anyways I wasn't really taking photos of much things and I was just like just getting bored of it and then literally this competition came along and I said this could be really something like when I heard the prize just up to Crow Park to Leinster Hurling final I was like if I ever got to go to that that would just be oh like absolutely unbelievable so then when I heard just the competition I entered it straight away and came back I won it's just that really yeah set me on so yeah, that's, that's a really good story. And then do you have any advice for any future leader students kind of wanting to follow in your footsteps? Yeah. So like I was lucky with the equipment I had. I had a DSLR camera. I'm actually taking, I'm doing the podcast with that camera right now. So I'm um, just, I was lucky with the equipment I had. But even if you have a phone, if you've your mother or your father's camera, just asking to bring it into school for that blitz or whatever the competition will be in the future. And just take the photos, even on YouTube, learn tutorials and how to change up the settings and everything. Because as Ramsey was saying, that really opens up your opportunities, even learning how to use a camera. Because if you're just shooting an auto, like the photos, when you go into manual and you know how to use everything, it's just really going to propel your photos to another level. So a phone or anything, just get out there and take photos. And honestly, hopefully, hope, please God, the competition could be won. So I was just lucky. Well, 
delighted. Yeah, no, that's really good advice. And I feel like anyone who does kind of want to follow in your footsteps should take that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Lily. Um, and so then, Joseph, do you have a website or a social media page that people could follow to track your progress? Yeah, my Instagram is Walsh Photography. And anytime I get out and take photos or anytime I'm doing any sort of event, I just put them up on that and try to share with followers and try to get a bit of do you know I mean, traffic on my site or on my Instagram, just get people interested and know who I am and all. So that's really maybe a website in the future if I get, do you know I mean, a bit more of a profile. But yeah, for the minute, it's just the Instagram. Yeah, just to get your name out there anyway. But yeah. And then, John, if someone wanted to find your work, where could they look? Well, GNRE, uh, the website, and um, obviously on our, our social media channels, it's it's all there. Um, just one thing, Sally, just from what Joseph was saying there, and I think it's great, uh, should be a great pointer for people maybe trying to get into um, sports media. I mean, what he did in reaching out, sports file, was great. Uh, I think people shouldn't be too shy about reaching out uh, because you'll find more often than not, people are, are glad to help um, in like, and I would say even something like, I know COVID at the moment making everything tricky, but if you're in, if you're a future leader or you're in transition year, get in touch with your local radio station, your local newspaper, um, they might be more than happy for you to create some content for them or help out in any way. Uh, but also, yeah, follow Joseph's path in terms of uh, reaching out, trying to get that experience uh, because people are more often than not happy to help. Mm -hmm. yeah no I think that is a really good point because I mean if you never try you'll never know but exactly, yeah. most of the time people are willing to help you yeah that's really good networking then, is huge like it's a small enough industry yeah. so the more you network um the better yeah it's all connected like you know um and then so Ramsey where can people follow your work um either the sports file website sportsfile.com or else sports file or across and um, pretty much all the social media networks on my own is um, Twitter and Instagram um, at Ramsey Cardi. So I you can get me there. That's that's really good. So everyone make sure you go give them a follow and see all their work. Um, so thanks a million lads for joining me today, John, Ramsey and Joseph. I really did enjoy the chat and I definitely learned a huge amount. I really, I, I learned a lot from it. Thanks so much. And I hope everyone watching did also. So thank you so much again. No problem. Thank you. Join me next week and we'll be looking at participation in sport, both on and off field, the benefits of involvement in sport and the opportunities that arise from it. So thanks so much for watching, guys. And remember, if you want to register for the Future Leaders Programme in 2021 or 2022 in the school year, please visit our website learning.gaa.ie forward slash future leaders and fill in the registration form. So I'll see you all next week. Bye.